here. Ready? Yep. Okay. It's six thirty, and on uh, Tuesday, August second, and we'll call the uh, Finance Administration Committee to order. I note that uh, Councilmember Holloway is present, Councilmember Mayhew, Councilmember Christensen, the Mayor, a City Administrator, City Clerk, and supporting staff. Um, all right, can you scroll down there for us? Any additions or changes to the agenda? If there's no objection, we'll take the agenda as approved. Agenda is approved. Can you scroll down for us? Thank you. Uh, I see no members of the public present in the count the council chambers. Um, are there any members of the public present online? I don't see any. Note to self: putting in password as username doesn't work. Um, okay, seeing no members of the public. Uh, we will move on to minutes. Are there any um, uh, changes or comments on the minutes for the, sorry, could we just go back so I can see which the two meetings were? Thank you. Uh, uh, oh, to, to the uh, Joint Finance Administration Public Safety meeting on July 19th and the regular uh, FNA meeting on July 19th. Seeing no comments or questions, if there are no objections, we'll take both minutes as approved. Seeing no objections, they are so approved. Uh, consideration of the claims approval report dated August 2nd, 2022. Are there any questions or comments? See none, I'll uh, share with uh, committee members that I've received no inquiries or questions regarding the claims report from other council members. Um, and therefore, if there is no objection, we'll take the claims approval report as approved for forwarding to the full council. Seeing no objection, it is so approved. Moving on to a long list of agenda bills. Wait, it's one. Uh, actually, uh, before we go into the agenda bill, I'm going to suggest why don't we review the city council agenda first and then we can move into the agenda bill, um, which uh, will probably stretch us into tomorrow evening as well. Um, so yes, let's go to that. Go ahead and scroll down for us. So we have a, a round table meeting at 6 p.m. Uh, on the topic of uh, Snoqualmie Mill Plan Commercial Industrial Plan. It's a quasi-judicial matter and potential closed session. Any comments, questions, or changes to that? Okay, moving on to the regular meeting agenda at 7 p.m. Any comments, additions, changes to the regular meeting agenda? All right, go ahead and scroll down. All right. Uh, could we add to, let's see, let's go up, scroll up a bit to uh, keep going. Keep going. Ah, uh, okay, so we'll eat, need to add a section on appointments. Um, that would be an item for um, council liaison appointments. All right, if there's no other changes, then we'll uh, take the agenda as approved subject to that modification. See no objection. Ah, Mayor. There may be another appointment to, I think it's Arts and Commissions, so possibly. Okay, so subject to addition of a potential Parks and Events Commission appointment. Arts. Did, I, did I say it correctly? Arts, Arts Commission. Excuse me, Arts Commission appointment. All right, no further comments, then so approved. Right, is there anything else that we had on there for action? I know we've got a couple discussion, potential discussion items, but could we just go back to the regu the uh, committee agenda? If 
by the way, that's fast. You guys are great. Thank you. Um, all right. Uh, let's scroll down just a tad. Uh, do we need to, I think we need to approve the August 9th special meeting agenda as well. Do we have that? Okay. Uh, so uh, the Snoqualmie Mill uh, plan, commercial industrial plan and possible closed session. Any comments or changes? If there's no... Go ahead and approve it. <laughs> if there are no objections, we'll take that agenda as approved. Seeing no objections, it is so approved. Okay, let's go back to um, agenda bill 22-074. Uh, financial management policy and I think uh, where we left off we were we had been uh, having a discussion of reserve balances so maybe uh, I think we'd asked um, uh, staff to give some further consideration to that topic so maybe pick up with that discussion Good evening, committee members. Um, you have before you a large uh, 11 by 17 forecast, financial forecast. Everyone has a copy of that? All right. Um, I just wanted to, to briefly just kind of orient um, everyone to the agenda, the FNA committee agenda uh, for this agenda bill on financial policy update. We uh, we broke out some of the documents uh, in the exhibits, and so I just wanted to make sure that uh, everyone had a chance to review the exhibit one, uh, which was a memo to help describe uh, the financial policy updates uh, and the steps involved with doing so. Uh, exhibit two uh, was the uh, the current I'm pulling up my my exhibits. Exhibit two is was the current policies and excerpts from uh, municipal code that referred to financial policy. Exhibit three was proposed new financial policy, and exhibit four was a crosswalk to help uh, with the conversation to compare. Uh, but uh, back to the uh, the section uh, that we were at. Uh, with the new proposed policy, and that was reserves, and we had a robust discussion about reserves and the challenges uh, with um, understanding whether or not um, our reserves tar reserve targets, uh, and I'll refer to the proposed policy where uh, reserve targets in the general uh, governmental funds were proposed of, uh, to be changed from 16.5 to a range. Uh, now, again, I wanted to just remind uh, that the purpose of a proposed range was that the council would have flexibility year after year uh, in uh, setting uh, the reserve targets in those governmental funds. Um, what I wanted to have that discussion with and um, orient you and walk you through an updated forecast, and that is the large spreadsheet. Um, this is what I call an interim forecast, because as you're aware, uh, we are going to be starting the biennial budget discussions and re setting reserves uh, is an important target. And so what I wanted to um, talk with you about is that uh, we have updated uh, some of these line items in this forecast. And I also wanted to let the council know is that as we start to uh, add in some staffing capacity, uh, Mr. Boutte uh, and our contract budget analysts have been working very quickly on updating some of these numbers. Nonetheless, we do intend to go through a major effort with updating and creating a financial model that's a, that is a, a, a living vehicle for the council to make decisions with 
Um, Mr. Boutet and I are working on what that model will be looking like. And so it's, it's a bit cart before the horse. But nonetheless, we do have an interim, an, a, a, an estimate here to help with that, that conversation right now about the target. Uh, what I wanted to point out to you was that we've updated the the 10 year uh, lookout period here with inflationary numbers that we have used to uh, propose the capital improvement plan. Uh, so those uh, inflation numbers are the same uh, percentages in uh, 22, 23, uh, and that in that six year period that we had provided to Council. So Mr. Boutet has updated our expenditures based on that. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. I just want to make sure I understood what you just said. When you said, first I thought you said the same like number for all the years, but did you mean the same look out, the, the percentages looking out that we uh, looked at when we were discussing police vehicles? Is that what you're referring to? Uh, yes, yes, sir. That was, and it was also, up, that is also the table that we use to update the, the proposed capital improvement plan. So it oh, is right. consistent now um, in this interim uh, forecast. Super. Okay. And that sources from the o state OFM projections, is that correct? That's correct. Okay, so um, so we've updated the on the expenditure side. We've done some updating on the revenue side. That's at the, the top of the spreadsheet. What we still have uh, left to do is um, to um, uh, work on those revenue forecasts but but nonetheless at least worse you know it's a it's a worst case scenario here with expenditures the other thing to keep in mind is that we're working through the operating budget uh proposals so uh, uh we we've um, extended out these expenditures forecasts based on those inflationary uh factors uh, I also wanted to point out um, that we added in a line item in the expenditures, and you'll see that about halfway down where we've specifically called out the transfer out from the governmental funds for capital investment so that we can start to tie what's proposed in the capital uh, improvement plan, that $2.5 million that you recall is in the CIP, and the source from which it comes from, which is from the governmental funds. So we wanted to include that uh, because the CIP is, is um, uh, hopefully close for council's consideration and adoption. Uh, that obviously has impacted the ending, um, uh, the forecasted ending fund balance. And another line item that we added uh, was that uh, the, the uh, actual is a hard word because it, it, this is a forecast in a crystal ball. But nonetheless, uh, a forecast of what the ending fund balance would essentially be if these were the revenue sources and the expenditures. So, so what we can see is that our ending fund balance is well over the current target. The current uh, reserve target is that total of 16.5%. So if we look at what we forecast uh, in this 10-year lookout period, uh, it would look like uh, the city is, has plenty of reserves, meets their reserve uh, target goal, and nonetheless that there would be excess that the city council could consider uh, using uh, for, for something or keeping uh, around. Um, but what happens is, is that consistent with other conversations that uh, staff has had is that about uh, 2025, uh, we start to see uh, where our expenditures are exceeding our estimated revenues. Um, that does not mean that we have we have no money. We still uh, continue to have a healthy ending fund balance, but it rapidly disappears uh, if, in fact, the remainder five years um, uh, stay in uh, in line with what has been forecasted. And you can see then at the end of the ten year period. Uh, in years 2030 and 2031 is where uh, we would not have adequate uh, capital reserves and we would be uh, needing to assess and find a way to build those reserves back up. <coughs> now that being said, I also I wanted to point out that regardless of the current target, the current reserve target of 16.5%, um, 
is similar in nature to a proposed range of 15 to 20 percent in the middle so nonetheless uh, there is work to do because of a structural imbalance um, with uh, expenditures exceeding revenues so things that we can do uh, we need to be looking at alternative revenue sources we need to be uh, pinpointing where we maybe perhaps have uh, uh, we are not collecting revenues that are all due to the city for example we're taking a look at um, some of our uh, programs with regards to administration tax or we're looking at ensuring that we are billing properly timely and uh, that we are collecting all funds due to the city on the expenditure side um, looking at ways um, to create efficiencies ways to um, uh, essentially uh, cut costs reduce reduce costs uh, we want to have the right costs in place so that we can deliver services to the community but nonetheless uh, we do have uh, a structural imbalance that the council needs to address and that is starting with uh, and there's always a conversation to be had, but it is um, starting with our biennial budget discussions that are that are coming up. That being said, then um, you can see the picture where we have updated. I want to find out if if this is enough information for right now, but also a suggestion is that if we can focus on financial policy narrative, what we can do then is during the biennial budget discussions is that in the proposed policy, we can keep the reserve target the same amount, 16.5%. But as we go through the biennial budget development process, that is where the council would be adjusting what their reserve target might be. Uh, but again, policy, our hope is that with that new financial policy, that we have a document that's easier to update. That is something that the council would be continually um, reviewing um, the administration will always be continually monitoring and so what that target number is when we need to change that when the Council is. Um, looking at their policy on an annual basis or a biennial basis a periodic basis uh, is that it's easier to say. Um, here's a, here's the language is it still a good policy statement, but oh we need to adjust that target amount, and so that's the goal with updating policy as well as that we create a document that's an easier read that's uh, comprehensive and all in one place so we don't have to go digging so can i um, ask you to do something so i'm <clears throat> first off fantastic document i think it's fantastic what you're putting together here is just just fantastic thank you um i wonder um if Looking at 2023 and the transfer out, I think um, for accountants like us, we like get that pretty quickly. I think for non-accountants, that gets that that can throw them off. And so I wonder if we could use, um, and I know we can get a little caught up in terminology. So, so I think we can solve it with our terminology. But I, I think if we could show a total, so both total expenditures. And then this revenue over under expenditures, then move transfer out for capital investment below that. So between that total and ending fund balance, so that someone doesn't scan across and say, oh, look, in 2023, we're going to run a deficit. Well, that's not at all what this is saying. It's saying that we're going to transfer out some excess. So if we could move that below then I think it you know for the non accountants they'll be more quickly able to just spot oh that's what's going on okay got it. Easy to so do. if we need to label it differently like if, if we feel it's important to name it you know expenditures excluding transfers if we need to put some terminology on I, I don't think we do but if if you guys think we do then let's do that but let's give them a line that they can just understand scan across here and see what's happening over time they can see the revenue expender. Because the truth is, as I understand this, we don't show a, uh, we don't show revenues below expenditures until 2025, and I would hate for someone to conclude otherwise. That's an easy change to make. 
it'll also help with um, policy, and we'll and we'll, we can talk about this in the policy statement about matching, um, you know, current revenues with current expenditures, and so that's that's an easy fix. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. That just keeps it. It's clear how to relate mm -hmm. what we're saying in the policy to this. Um, the transfers out can can throw that can, can confuse if if it's sort of in there. So. And then just back to then, so this is fantastic. Here's my, oh, I have a question and then I have two questions. One is, so so kind of zeroing in on this reserve range. So um, we say 15 to 20%, and my question is 15 to 20% of what? Because I can't sort of, it's not clear to me why that reserve requirement goes up in 2023 and then goes back down. And I think it's because, well, there's, I didn't run the math. I could have figured it out mathematically, but it's one of two things that are, that I think maybe if we sort of think about this differently, wouldn't cause that to fluctuate like that. But I was just curious. So how, what are we calculating? 15 to 20% of what? Expenditures. So if we do what we just discussed about moving the um, capital invest, or sorry, the transfer out below expenditures. And therefore, if you think we need to in the policy, we could say expenditures excluding transfers. Uh, then I think we get actually what we're intending to do, because I don't think we intend that to pop up just because we transferred some money out. I, don't, I think that's sort of unintended consequence. So I think we can just fix that. Does that make sense? That makes sense. That's easy enough to do, and that's something that we can talk about too in the um, in the proposed policy to specifically um, uh, kind of uh, exclude the transfers out. Yep. Exclude transfers, yep. but we we can notate that it, it expenditures less transfers, and in some communities they even take out other non departmental. So. Um, I, I don't necessarily recommend anything else because you're still trying to fund, you know, some of those programs, but transfers is one of those that uh, it's left in because they're, uh, for example, uh, it, you know, the general fund typically uh, accommodates for a street Im improvement fund. So it just kind of depends, depends on but the city, yeah. we absolutely yeah. um, can put that in and then that would continue to make it clearer. So that's my recommendation to take it out here as we just discussed and then also modify the policy just to, the policy. to do the same thing. Yes. So with that in mind then, okay, so I'm going to kind of assume that 2023 will be somewhere between the number in 22, 2.7 million, and the number in 2024, which is 2.9 million. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the minimum 15% there, so I'm just yeah. sort of imagining somewhere in between. So here's the question I just sort of want to think about is, well, there's two questions that jump out at me, but the question is, and I think we're sort of digging around on this last time, is I suspect, my own view right now is that I suspect 3 million is more than we need. But I'm not sure. But as I think to things that we've drawn the fund or potentially might have drawn on that, it just doesn't, 3 million seems like a, a really big number for Snoqualmie. And I, I get that percentages in other cities and things, but I just think about our own experience and 3 million seems like such a big number. That's about 25% of annual expenditures, right? For the operating fund. So it just seems like way too, like we would not need to allow for that much reserve. So it still seems large to me. So I think about, you know, what could go wrong? Well, we could have a big flood. We could have something like the, well, it's a bad example, but the water, Maine that cost us a million bucks last year. It's a bad example because actually you don't pay for that out of the general fund, you pay for that out of utilities. But just thinking about things that would be very costly, it doesn't seem like three million is the kind of thing we face, but I'm not sure, but I it just continues to seem high to me. So I'm wondering, are we unnecessarily high on that balance is what I'm wondering. And understand, I ask that as a very conservative accountant who likes to seem, you know, it's like it's, it's, I'm not trying to be aggressive here. I'm just questioning, is it more than we need? No. 
Okay, I'm questioning with reason why that's <laughs> more than we is it more than we need. Well, and again, you have 10%, which is cash flow reserve, just because revenue is sporadic by nature. So you need money to carry you between the payments from the state. So that's just a, a doing business percentage. Okay, operating reserve is five percent in case you have an issue that drives you, and five percent is, you know, maybe a month. I'd have to go look. So if we had a month with no, for some reason, you know, the state got hit by a virus, and for one month we're not going to get paid. Not only do we have the carry carry percentage we need, but we now need five percent to carry us that month. One month is not three months. Three months. Five percent of twelve. Okay, I'll no. Operating operating budget is like ten to twelve million. Uh operating budget is or is it grown? Expenditures grown, grown. are like seventeen, eighteen going to twelve. Well once upon a time it's ten to twelve million a year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, again, right now we're in a period we're talking somewhere between 17 so and $20 million. Dollars. So it's about two million, yeah. Can, can we, to, to Councilmember Holloway's point, I, I was actually confused about this when I was reading the policy. Um, so let's just focus on that notion of it, it's not a reserve, or maybe it is, I guess. Yeah, the way it was in the policy, it's a reserve. So sort of just the cash balance that we just want to, for the points that Councilmember Holloway was making, you know, you know we've got to fund ourselves while we're waiting for revenues to come in which and so on is that part of the 15 to 20 percent or is that additional to the 15 to 20 percent that's part of it that's, that's ten, part that's 10%, of it that's 10, ah. that's 10 percent is the carry charge of intermittent yeah, yeah, revenue yeah, yeah, yeah. okay so the point if i'm following councilmember holloway is don't do that <laughs> is look what could happen is you could have a something could happen which means you're delayed getting your revenue from the state mm -hmm. and you suddenly have a bunch of out of pockets and those could all hit at once mm -hmm. so that's the point you're making you got to add them up right you add them up. and you really only have 1.5 percent for flood mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh if you were you know that alone may be low but then you have the other reserves as buffer if we need to I am go convinced. Yeah. I am convinced. Yeah, I'm convinced. So, that really yeah, that was really helpful. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Today's right. the plus column. All right. <laughs> so that's the 15%. So then we go to the 20%. And so under the policy, what we'd say is, we'd be so our policy would be saying, don't go below 15%. That's a really bad idea. That's correct. And really, you just don't need to be above 20%. That's just unnecessary. And then what you're saying is, so as you do the budget each year, council, mayor would propose, council would consider, where do you want to be in there? Mm -hmm. And that might move around as we, in the future, are looking at what's going on in the economy, what's going on, like climate, climate. all kinds of things might cause us to move around in that range, and we can consider that each Biennium. So oh, it seems reasonable. We're at, uh, can you scroll up just a little bit? We're at a 37, 33% ending fund balance percentage. We're estimating that at the end of 2022, we would be at around 37%. So, well, that's a different percent. So, so be careful. <laughs> that's a different percent yeah policy wise is in the the current policy is in the bar below and then proposed policy with that range is is then farther down so it it, it essentially shows that is that the you know the the ending fund balance or cash balance is is doing well I and mean, we're, we're doing well we have too much according to policy correct so my question is basically the policy you're proposing there's 20 percent of ending fund balance we ought to be doing something with yeah so she gave us the dollar number so if you just follow on i was kind of zeroing in on that minimum 15 percent do you see that row mm -hmm. one row below that is she calculates for us hey if you wanted to be at 15 percent then based on where you're ending this is how many dollars of excess reserve you've got exactly what's just been highlighted so at the end of 22 
what she's telling you is if you want to be at 15 percent you're you're about 4 million let's see 3.9 million more than you need mm -hmm. now if you want to be at so wait wait us back right there yeah according to the policy as stated we ought to do something with that 3.9 percent my question is what do we want to do with that 3.9 million dollars so what we got what what this is proposing we would do and it's already in the CIP, so this is not a surprise to us, is, hey, let's take two and a half million of it, right. move it over to capital. Mm -hmm. So you just did something with it. <laughs> well, not well, yet. Not if yet. we can pass the darn thing, then we'll have done something with it, right? That, that's what that's what we're hopeful for. <laughs> Actually, we won't have done, done anything to it until we have passed the budget, but we, at least True. we'd, yeah. <laughs> but you're yeah. working towards, in a, working in a, towards you know, it. forward progress is good. So my question, though, is if we go back down to that 3.9 million or even if you want to focus on the 20 percent which would be the max range under this proposal we'd be three million over my question is is two and a half million the wrong number should we actually take three million because i think maybe we should not maybe i do think we should just because look it's excess reserves we're saying excess reserves should be shifted to one-time purposes and capital fund is where we're mm -hmm. putting our one-time purposes, right? I mean, not all of them, but some of them. No, wait, do you have a policy statement up? The policy statement, I can share my screen with the proposed policy, and that's where I, I wanted to direct. I'm just, my, my question is, does the, does the policy say shift it to capital, or no. does the policy say do something? It says do something one-time purposes. One capital outlay expenditures, which include capital equipment, that one? Say it again. Last bullet point is provide resources for one-time capital outlay expenditures, which include capital equipment as part of the capital improvement plan. That. So it does. But it doesn't say you have to go to CIP. It says two, two, like the CIP. One. Oh, sorry. So that's a, conditions for using general. Also, two point okay. seven. Two point seven. Sorry. So there's. So just to, let me recap. So there is in two, in the proposed policy two point two point one, there are conditions for using ge the general fund reserves. And those include provide temporary resources in the event of economic downturn, provide resources to meet emergency expenditures in the case of flood, fire, earthquake, disaster. Sure, that's the purpose of reserves. Yep, and so provide resources uh, for one-time capital outlay expenditures, which include capital equipment as part of the capital improvement plan. Further in the proposed policy, there are two sections that specifically then call out uh, it is 2.6 and 2.7. So this is the council's policy statement on replenishment of reserves. So should the assigned fund balance uh, targets fall below the thresholds, the city will strive um, to towards regaining the minimum threshold during the next budget cycle and forecast the timing of the unassigned fund balance improvements within the long-term financial model. Excess reserves, uh, the statement is, is that if they're above your targeted levels, is that they may be used for new expenditures with emphasis on one-time uses that achieve future operating cost reductions, capital asset investments with a long-term benefit, or prepaying existing debt. And then it's further bolded is that use of excessive reserve, excess reserves will be determined by the City Council through the next available budget cycle or budget amendment defined through an agenda bill. So it's it's essentially is is that we build a long term financial model that's a that's a living useful tool. And when we start to see that there would be excess reserves, it will it would be the administration's um, responsibility in this policy to bring forward. Hey, we have more money. Uh, what are we going to do with it? So that's that's a, a, a what's policy. We wanted it to be clear that. We bring that to the council when there's excess reserve and you determine what you want to do with it. Correct. Sure. You know all I'm saying? So we've said 2.5 to go to capital. So that still leaves 500 above uh, the 16.5, 500,000. And so my question there is to do what with that? And I'm, I'm not sure what to do with that. I don't necessarily mind a, a reasonable we may be beyond that, but a reasonable ending fund balance. Um, okay. I'm, well, just, I'm just poking holes at the policy. I mean, if, it, yeah. if we're above, the policy says, go do something. Well, are we going to go do something or are we, it's okay? 
I think we, I think the policy, we should go do something that this policy would say, you should move 3 million out. Yep. And so I think we should move 3 million out. And where do I get 3 million? That's from the top end of the policy. So if you want to, if you're saying, hey, let's be uh, cautious, fine. In this policy, the room to be cautious is the half million. Sorry, can we go back to that um, spreadsheet? The half million between the yellow line, sorry, the million dollars between the yellow line and the, the bottom row is still, you still left that in there. So you're still a million dollars above your minimum, but we should at least clear out that which is above the maximum. So that whole 3 million. And my point of view on that is the reason I like this policy is where did that money come from? Well, it came primarily from taxes. So if we're going to tax people, let's be prudent, yes, but then let's deploy the taxes for benefits for the residents. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, look at moving that two and a half million that, that we're moving out to CIP, move it to three million. Or, or, or ask administration, hey, take a look at that. If you want to come propose a different way to use that, then come propose that as part of your budget proposal. But, you know, following the guidance of 2.7, which is, you know, kind of tells you the kind of thing you should look at using that for. That makes sense? Go I will. I'm sold on this range personally, if, if you guys are. I'm comfortable with that. I think it's a good idea to get the flexibility so that we can go ahead and take a look at it and make sure that's what's coming down the pipelines or what we can reasonably anticipate at the time. Okay. So let me, there's there's one other thought that I'm I- not, oh. point, but it, I'm still not sold on the range, but I'm sold on a 16.5% reserve. Oh, so you don't want the range. You want to stick with the 16.5. I think when we're above or below that, these questions should come into effect. I, I don't necessarily need to wait till I'm 20% to ask the question. Uh, I can ask the question that 16.5 six, is a reasonable reserve. So if I'm $10,000 above that, we gotta look at that $10,000 and decide what to do. But that may just be you know, a twitch on the percentage versus a full 3.5% above than an additional 3.5%. But I'm okay. Never mind. I'm, I can deal with it. I was, just, I was just following the math. I was just working out in my head. I have a recommendation. We could add in the policy that when, when if, if, the, if the council approves a range, that we could add in language is that when we're getting to the midpoint of that range, is that that's when um, we staff is for sure bringing um, that to the council with regards to we're building excess uh, over that that midpoint of the range. So we could add in uh, that guidance for that trigger, I guess, uh, where we would uh, be bringing that to the council about what we want to do. No, don't. I'm 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 not objecting to the range. Uh, I'm just not going to put a banner up and vote for it. Um, <laughs> It's, I'm very binary, 16.5%. I'm good with that. Um, and I drive decisions based on that. Um, what in essence you're proposing is that every year you go, what's the number? What's the number? I'm like, no, the number is 16.5. Um, I don't have to decide next year, is it 17 or 18? A, a, a range doesn't do me, it's gonna be a percentage. The reserve is going to be some percentage of mathematically that's true yeah. <laughs> so i don't but never mind i'm just whining well, no, just so, no but the, the key thing we want to determine here is so the proposal is change the policy to this range as opposed to the 16.5 so the question is are you okay with that change no because you took what should be a number and made it a smudge but we so so. So what, what is the reserve I sh we should be planning? 
uh, I, we either ask ourselves that every year, where do, in the range do we want to be? Or we set it and says, mm, logic says it's 16.5. You know, 10% for operating, operating or revolving fund, 5% for uh, in case things go south, and 1.5% in case we get 40 days of rain and it floods. Um, but I won't vote no. Just go on. Never mind. I just okay, don't understand so, what so, to do with it. Okay, so you don't want you're okay with that proposed because that's what you put in here. The a range is that correct? That's correct. So if you're okay with moving forward with that? You're not I objecting. Won't no, I won't vote no against. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's move on from that. Um, the I, I I would say. I think your green row there in the middle, where you do government fund reserves and you put a percentage there, I think that's probably a bad idea because, well, first off, those aren't reserves, that's fund balance. Fund balance and reserves are not the same thing as you know. So, I, but I think that what readers will do is confuse that percentage with the percentages being discussed below or even if it's not on the same sheet with the concept of the reserve percentages. So I would either, I think sort of showing fund balance as a percentage is probably just not really relevant or helpful, so I'd leave it off. But if you are going to put it on, I'd put it on as the reserves as a percentage like you did. Well, as the reserves as a percentage, not the fund balance as a percentage. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I'd almost put the reserves in there before the fund balance. See, so here's my reserves at 16.5%. At that added to the difference between revenue and expenses adds to my ending fund balance. Which you can only do if you pick a 16.5% not a range. <laughs> yeah. Are you trying um, to backdoor this question? No, no, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm trying to, draw, like you were saying, I'm trying to draw the distinction between ending fund balance and reserves. So could you give some thought to the point, Council Members Holloway, how best to kind of help us see that maybe? Well, um, I, yeah, I mean, there's there's some who um, understand fund balance or reserves just as by the checkbook analogy is that fund accounting is little checkbooks, and so there's a beginning balance, there's deposits, and there's there's checks written, and there's the your ending balance every day has a has an ending balance. Um, some um, then might leave in a balance uh, in in that checking account for those can, can rainy just, days. Because now you're further confusing because the fund balance is not the amount in our checking account. So actually we're now further confusing the matter. Well, I, I, and but some people, some people, if you talk, if you say fund balance, they think of reserves and cash balance. And so there's there's no differentiating. So, but they'd be wrong to think that, right? So we wanna help them think about the right thing. That's right. So what we can do is we can separate out cash balance. Now that changes every day. Um, and so that we can, we can separate out the different fund balance and we can separate out the reserves because the reserves are not in the, the general fund. They are set aside in separate funds. They, but they, but the they, fund balance. Are they not part of the ending fund balance? Yes, they are part of the ending fund balance, and that's why they're they're depicted here. But when you when you set up funds and you move those dollars into that fund, then that is your contingency fund. That is your reserve fund. That's your uh, capital uh, operating reserve fund. And so that is how they are tracked. But they that's are. That's how all you're part proposing to do it. Because that's not how we currently do it, right? That. That cash reserve, that ten, like that, just sits in 001 right now, doesn't it? In the fund, does that sit in 001? Well, They're separated out. Funds. Yeah. No, I know that, but the the portion that's the just funding um, um, cash flow is actually just sitting in 001, isn't it? In 001. Currently, so I think what you're saying is no, no, no. When we do this, we're going to move this balance into. 002 or 03, wherever we're going to put it, we're going to move it out of 001. That's what you're saying. We we want to if we want to separate it out, then we can then we can do that. Policy is written so that we have the option to leave it in 001, or we could specifically move it into. It. Um, council does not have to set up separate funds for uh, the reserves. Right. So we're getting into some yeah details <laughs> getting... that we probably isn't helpful. Yep. I, I agree with what you said. I don't. Um, I'm just. Um, 
I think what Councilmember Holloway was trying to drive at here is he he thinks it would be helpful. Correct me if I'm wrong, but he thinks it would be helpful when someone looks at that ending fund balance to be able to understand that right when they look at it, okay, of that funding ending fund balance, this is how much is reserves and here's how much is excess or shortfall, if you will. We can, we will show it that way. Okay, so however you kind of solve that, you, you guys can play with it and come up with, yeah. you understand the objective, so you'll get there. Understand the objective. And as we start to build a, a long-term financial model, that is where we want to clearly depict uh, fund balance, reserves, um, cash, all of those targets, also to have your the ability for the council to quickly see, are you over, are you under, did you meet uh, target? And so that's our goal. So since we're on a modified cash basis, you, I just trying to explain that to a real person is, I think in my 30 years of accounting, I've never successfully explained that to a real person. So I would, that may be a failure on my part, but I would just say, um, bringing the cash part in probably is just going to create confusion. I think they understand, as you said, I think they understand the fund balance to likely be the amount that's in the, the bank account. Mm -hmm. The fact that that's a little bit different is probably not, it's not a meaningful thing for them to know in setting policy. So I would just leave that alone and not bring up the cash balance. If they believe that's the cash balance, they're close enough to correct to just leave that. Sure. Would Some, be my sometimes I'll add in that you you have a savings account and you move the money into your savings account, but there's all kinds of ways to to explain it <laughs> and it is tough. Yeah, just always ask yourself, if I go into that, am I helping them or am I just confusing it, right? Depends on the person. Depends on the person. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, that that explained to me. Oh, oh, no, there was one other thing I wanted to bring up. Because I did bring this up last time, and I don't know if you've had a chance to think about it, but s sort of one concept that maybe that I didn't see in here, but I thought was in our previous reserve policy or current reserve policy. I thought there was a notion of a stabilization fund. I can't remember if that's exactly what we called it, but that notion is that is that a notion that was there and we're taking out now, or it was never there and I'm just wrong? I don't believe it was there. Okay. And so that that's why in the proposed policy, um, there's the statement um, with regards to contingency, pulling up that section, Cylinder. that gives the council that flexibility um, to use a contingency fund. Um, we could we could change oh, that to a stabilization various... fund. So it's just a matter of what do you want to call the fund if you want it specifically. Uh, described and then that's what we would put in the policy um, so that it would be clear what's the fund that holds our reserves what's the fund that set aside for stabilization um, or for for the purpose uh, that the council wishes to use that fund well i'm okay if if the uses of the contingency fund include you know stabilization if that concept is in there then i'm fine with that being part of that fund just wanted to okay. make sure that was what you were that you thought about that, and that's in fact what you're recommending. Yeah, in the proposed policy, um, what you'll see over and over is the the difference between flexibility and control. The goal is to give council flexibility in the financial policies for those those economic downturns and deciding what to do when it's there's excess and and whatnot. Also, flexibility in uh, what we call funds, uh, and you'll see that when we start to talk about some of the other sections, uh, that, that is the goal. Now we've seen here with 16.5, um, Councilmember Holloway, that is the perfect example of, of uh, a level of control, and then having a range is an example of giving the council flexibility, and that is the, the goal in the new proposed policy. Can I, can I just point this out, because I'll be end up pointing this out in a whole bunch of sections, but let me just give the concept. The council has flexibility whether this policy gives it to them or not. Absolutely. Because anything as <laughs> one of the things that kind of bothers me is that we're reconsidering this policy, which is prior councils 
gave us the guidance we have and said, this is what you guys should look at. And right out of the gate, we're throwing it away and saying, no, we're going to make our own. So certainly that's prerogative of councils to do that. They don't have to take that guidance. You know, a past council can't tell a future council what to do. But um, so, so just when we sort of purport to limit a future council, it's sort of doesn't really make any sense because they can do as they please, right? So we sh I think we should use words like, like you have in many of these sections where you recommend uses, you know, can, you know, should be used. So not can, because that purports to limit, but should be used for things such as boom, boom. And if we just sort of word it like that, then future councils will perceive this as advice from the past, fully recognizing they can do as they please. It's, it's their prerogative, right? That's right. Okay. Also, just to add on to that, is that in the proposed policy, a lot of it um, is similar language that's in current policy. Our goal is to get it into one comprehensive document, make it easy to change when a future council, if they would choose to change wording, change a target, change any part of the policy, that is easier to do. So it, it, it is something that we can, you can quickly see. Um, I like to use a red line and to show what, what's changing because that's always a question. So that's, a, that's another goal of updating the policy to more, maybe perhaps more modern language uh, and um, like I've indicated, taking out some of the, uh, the structure or the procedures, uh, but sticking more with policy statements. Okay. Thank um, you. Go ahead, sir. I, all right, I need to understand how the conversation is going to go from here. So let's take uh, 2023, first, first year in the next biennium. Uh, right now, it, in the budget proposal that would come forward, uh, got an ending fund balance of four point four point six million dollars. Is it then the statement is then that somewhere between uh, let's get my years right twenty three somewhere something between three point two and four point two million dollars of that is reserve. Correct. Or are we going to say? What number are you going for this year? If it's sixteen point five, then cool. You have a you have a reserve of or whatever it is. Three point five. Three point five. I'm concerned if you if you have the conversation of somewhere between a dollar and a dollar twenty five are reserve, but it's something a concept out here outside of the budget. We will lose it. It will get rated, and it will be gone. I've seen councils do it. <laughs> so what you what we could say to address that is we could well look council can do whatever it wants at so peace. so but but maybe what you're I'm driving trying to protect at, future councils yeah, from, yeah, bad from them so, yeah um, so maybe what we say is the <laughs> the. I don't like saying this. You, you could give guidance that says that we would request, look, to be similar, in a similar vein, the mayor has a responsibility under state law to propose a budget. And she determines what that proposal is. We, we don't, we determine what the final budget is, but we, we don't determine, determine what her proposal finals. is. Yeah. So what I was going to say is we could say, you know, please bring us a proposal that is at 16.5%, but I don't like trying to tell the, I don't like infringing on the mayor's authority. No, she's, no. she's got I'm the just, authority to decide I'm herself. I'm just saying it, it's more along the lines of uh, bring us proposal. Reserves should be somewhere between 15 and 20%, as we said. But at the end, when we sign the perennial budget for that year, it should be a specific dollar amount percentage. So, so maybe you're saying should be between 15 and 20 percent with a target of 16.5 percent. Mm -hmm. Would that be what you're looking for? Yes, but I do want, again, I, I don't want it as a concept off to the side from the budget. I want it in the budget as a line with a, with a dollar figure on it. 
So I'm with you. I'm just trying. I can't figure out specifically what you want. No, I mean, each year it changes. I mean, you may decide, okay, I want it 17% this year because for some reason. Okay. But at the end, when we, when we finally approve that biennial budget, it needs to be a dollar figure and a percentage. I don't know if it's necessarily a percentage, but it needs to be a dollar figure. But we, we can't tell a future council that they have to do that. It's their, it's their prerogative to do as they please. Uh, Agreed. And that, but when we do the biennial budget, which is under our this one, this, this one, one is yeah. Those that reserve needs to be a dollar figure, right. and we can say out years for planning purposes, we're going to do seventeen, eighteen, sixteen point five. Pick your number. So let me guess if I've got it yet. What you're saying is in the policy we should say that the council should set the reserves between fifteen and twenty percent. And in their budget, in their appropriation document, they should specify the dollar amount and percentage that they, so they should specify the percentage and dollar amount that they select. Right. If you don't have it it planned in the budget, it all looks like ending reserve and fair game. Does that make sense, the way I translated what he said? Well, it makes sense, but when the council adopts their, their budget, right it's revenues expenditures and fund balance is that table um a couple of of ways to show what the reserve target is in that (laughs) biennial would be for us to add it into the budget ordinance to say that whereas this you know the the budget meets financial policies uh whereas the you know the reserve target for this forget the whereas is but what would be the conclusion (laughs) (laughs) you're getting fancy I can, I can get, get with the city attorney. He'll give you a lot of whereas. So, so, anyways, in that budget ordinance is where the council would then document what reserve target that you're that you're achieving in that two year cycle. So hold on, let's maybe I can take two points and put them together. Maybe what we say is the reserves should be transferred to fund 002. You name the fund for us as part of each biennium's uh, appropriation. If you say that, then the specific dollar amounts in the appropriation, and I think that's what you're getting at. That's what I'm getting at. If, if it's a concept outside of the budget, we'll lose it's it. It's lost. Does but that make would, sense? Yeah, that makes sense. So you would see that in the budget is that that, that would be a transfer, yep. right, from the 001 to 002, pick a number, n- name of the fund, specifically to set aside uh, for yep. your target yep. in that biennial. Yep. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I, I think that makes great sense. Now, I wasn't following you till now. No, I'm just protecting yeah, no, future councils. It. Yeah. It's if it's not a dollar figure there, it'll get lost. Yep. Yep. And it really helps them to see it. Oh, it's in there it is. It's in that there fund. It yeah. It's not over here mixed with other stuff. Yeah. Okay, is that, is that good? Yeah, I'm good. By the way, just, just so that we're all clear, this is not the city's budget proposal. This is a, a preliminary draft, a working draft that's in process, and it's just for help us thinking purposes, right? That, that's correct. I, I would call this our interim forecast of revenues, expenditures, uh, fund balance, reserves. Um, that is our, our goal. It's on our work plan to develop a long-term financial model, mm-hmm. and that that would be that conversation piece every time the council needs to make financial decisions is that we bring that model to you so that you can work off of that great thank you can it uh, let me ask you a question you can say no um it it might be helpful it to understand if it maybe in the title whatever like for property tax i assume you're consider you're thinking it's a one percent per year uh that's correct Okay, so it might be nice in parentheses on the title, 1% growth annually. And same thing with the other one. What's what's the escalator you have that you're considering on each of the revenue expenditure? Um, because that will it help answer the question of, well, I have revenue and it's growing and I have expenditures and it's growing. Well, if it's all growing by the uh, inflation, it should still balance out, but it doesn't because there's an imbalance. And what that imbalance is, that those percentages might help. Yes, no? Yes. 
Okay. So in the financial Welcome model, Washington State. yeah, we'll have some assumptions, and that's where the council will see what that's we're, right. what we have for assumptions. Um, also, that um, we'd be looking to establish, you know, pulling master data is is the council's. Um, uh, it's your it's your way to assess what has happened in the past, how we come to those numbers, um, how we use historical data in order to forecast. So you'll you'll see some of that when we start to create those the the model for you. Just um, if you could do this for me. Um, as soon as you can, like first thing tomorrow when you get in, <laughs> label this thing work, interim working draft, something very like put it like three ways from Sunday, because what I don't want is someone to. I'm just going to stop talking. It would be really good if you would put that labeling on it as soon as you can. We'll do that. And put a date on it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Too. So when you come with the next one and I'm holding the old one, <laughs> we can go, oh, that's, you got the wrong copy. But draft across. No, I, I agree draft, but it's also a date so that Absolutely. I know when the yeah. when when you've made update mm -hmm. versus me trying to compare old numbers to new numbers and not knowing. Absolutely. Um, well, I think, yes, what he said. I think this is just a fantastic yeah. thing that we've just done, which is get through this question of fund balances. Um, this is a major achievement, I think, yeah. Okay, so um, that, just remind me what section is is this in again? Is uh, well, it the two section? Yeah, it is, it is two, uh, section number two. And so um, I, I believe we, uh, we have just gotten through uh, <laughs> section 2.21. Um, Bad there, news. Yeah, <laughs> you didn't. You know, some some of these we could probably have the same conversation with regards to the different types of funds because section two point three is enterprise funds, uh, and two point three point one through five um, specifically lists out um, the targets for our utility funds uh, with regards to. Um, what we would need to keep in um, uh, those funds to keep them healthy. Uh, 2.3.1 is capital funding obligations. So, can we just go oh, back? Sorry to about that. No, no, it's okay. I'm sorry, I just don't want you to get too far into that because I want to follow with you what you where you're going. But can we just go back and finish off on 2.2 .2 for a second? Certainly. Um, so we have this section in red. Reserves may be used at the discretion of the city council too, and then it lists out some things. Mm -hmm. So what we're purporting to do here is limit a future council and i think that's wrong the city council can do as it pleases so i mean within the law within mm -hmm. state law but so i don't think we should tell them what they i don't about think we should attempt to limit them should. it says reserves is it may. for us to tell them though is that really for us mm -hmm. and and by the way remember that right now at the beginning of a new council we're throwing away their like we're just ignoring the past advice that came to us so like should we isn't this kind of a like is that really something we should be in the business of trying to artificially tell a future council you can and can't do something that in fact they can do like shouldn't we just be silent on that i i would think that the guidance would be helpful in them to the extent that they don't want to take our advice they can just well, well we're actually a filing case. Uh, we're, but we're it says may so this is not so I'd be okay with that approach if it should, but if we're saying may, I, I don't want someone coming into council saying, because we adopt this by an ordinance, right? Uh, by, an, by an ordinance is the, I don't want the someone coming in saying, you broke the law, you didn't, this says you can only, you may only do this, and then you didn't. And the council sort of looking, wait, I didn't know it said that, well, wait, what? At least the first part of that sentence is correct, that reserves may be used at the discretion of city council there may be we might want to put but should be focused in areas of and then have the bullets that's what i'm looking for is language like that so that in that we're advising them not a, purporting to limit them right. when we don't have the ability to do if, that if, if a future council wants to zero out the reserves to buy a tree house we can't stop them they have full right to do that 
Don't tell Matt I said. So that. Does, that, does that make sense? Just sort of oh, yeah. adjusting the language. So instead of may, you know, more like shoulds or okay. you, you know. And in some of in some of the current um, financial uh, policies that there there are a lot of shells. Yeah. Um, so if you know, if we just if we went through the, some of the current policies, I, you know, I'm looking at financial planning policy section three of resolution 777 city shall develop the finance officer shall do the city shall can you know constantly so the you know shifting to may and should um you know i i hear you and we can make those adjustments i sort of marked up like so many cases where it's just the same thing over and over so if this if i had a microsoft word version i'm happy to do a track changes and send it to you but if you just want to do it yourselves you, you understand what yep. the comment is so it's Under, okay. understand and what what we'll do is when we come to a you know final policy um my typical practice is that i'll give you a red line version of the proposed so you can see what we've changed along the way mm -hmm. uh, and then i'll give you a clean version for you to adopt uh, when you're ready that's to great do that. so, okay. just as long as we're tweaking one other thing um Catastrophic failures? Can that just be catastrophic events? <laughs> Failure implies you built a bridge and it failed. This is not that. It's an event. <laughs> City Council does not determine what God will do. <laughs> well, we could put really? a, we could put a may in there and tell him. <laughs> Shall. Shall. <laughs> I'm just they're events, not failures. Um, oh, sorry. Tell her. And you could again. You could tell me no, if you're really hard set on that. It's not that big of a point. Okay. Sorry. So that that now you're done with two point two. <laughs> you can move on. All right. We're we're doing good. Uh, okay. So back to two point three, which is reserve level targets for enterprise funds. Uh, there is suggested language about uh, financial indicators for those utility funds, which are primarily the, the uh, enterprise funds. And so the first one is for the capital funding obligations. And this is, this is that flexible statement um, that uh, indicates that, there, that those funds need to have uh, uh, sufficient reserves uh, based on the six-year CIP. And so that that changes. And so, oh, yep. <laughs> no. I, didn't, I thought you were done. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to to run through the different uh, indicators, but we can go one by one. Is, is that okay if we just kind of go oh, one absolutely. by one? So on 2.3.1 in utilities, mm -hmm. actually those decisions are made with a much longer time frame, more like 20 years. Mm -hmm. So if you kind of go look at our you know, when they do those rate studies, the capital portion looks out, wait, six years is too short a period. Right. So, yeah. um, so I, I think referring specifically to the six year capital improvement plan is um, actually not wise, but it, I think you're on the right track, but I think that's the wrong, like maybe we say, you know, as defined through the just say great studies plan. or well it'll be outside of the C the cip only goes six years she's right but yeah. the rate study looks at a much longer period in coming up with with what we're trying to fund for capital uh, another uh another uh wording suggestion would be the master uh water plan the the sewer general plan those master plans for the utilities which are a 20-year lookout the only thing is, I don't think that those are the same numbers that end up in the rate studies. I oh, think they should they be. No, I agree <laughs> with that. <laughs> I just don't think they are. Okay. I don't think we've been following. Yeah. Because we sort of do the rate study when we do the rate study, which isn't usually coordinated, hasn't usually been coordinated with when we update those things that you're referring to. So th th we end up with this little mismatch that they're never quite the same. But I think the really operative, the decision-making document is the rate study. Um, absolutely. I mean, that's the, the council sets the rate study, approves the rate study, and we use that going forward. So we can make that change to that, that it aligns and accommodates for reserves based on the rate study, the latest rate study. 
I would recommend that, but check, make sure I'm right. You know, just because we'll, I we'll said it's, it. they're yeah. out of sync, go make sure that's true. But well, we will do that. Hmm. Oh, look, someone knows the answer right he knows now. Knows the answer because so, I've only got six months here, and this is why yeah. we this is why we move. <laughs> so generally, we went through a process of updating the utility system plans at the same time that we were proposing a new utility CIP we did. back in 2020. And so, oh, 2020. Back then, those numbers did align, but we have updated the CIP even very recently, where we actually inflated the cost of those utility projects. And so, at this point, those plans are probably out of alignment right now, as we speak. Yeah. So I think you want to go for the, you don't want to create this circle where, wait a minute, now we got the wrong numbers, we can't, you know, I, I would go with the latest document I think is always going to be the rate study, the latest rate study. Yeah, uh, we would hope to update, I believe, the rate study every two or three years. Yeah. Uh, I think for council discussion in the past, uh, the utility rate study usually looks at about 10 years. Jen is right, the utility system plans tend to look out 20 years with more of a focus on those first 10 years. So 10 years would probably sound pretty good so so the first four uh, either re either refer to a governing document or specify a rule to calculate the fifth doesn't it's just amounts to require I, is there is there is that part of the rate is that number defined in the rate study drew the uh, emergency capital repairs or is that um, how is that calculated so i don't think we've ever considered emergency capital repairs in the past but that may be something that we want to consider moving forward um, I know we, we often consider the operating reserves, uh, the debt coverage ratio, uh, for example. Uh, system reinvestment has been a comp, uh, conversation piece with council in the past as well. How much do we need to reinvest in the system annually? Um, but no, I don't think 2.3.5 is, and that would probably be something that we should consider as a part of this to make sure that we have sufficient cash on hand to support any oh, sort I'm of I'm not arguing that it shouldn't be there. Canyon Springs is an example oh, that yeah. comes to mind. Yeah. I'm just saying, uh -huh. uh, and for the general fund, we said uh contingent reserves are 1.5 percent of expenditures should we do something similar in here it says 1.5 percent of expenditures is yeah. a contingency reserve for utilities i'll just add a little bit to that when we think about canyon springs what we had to do in that situation is actually find an offset so we had to delay yep. a project in order to accommodate that so consequently you know you're delaying potentially something that was going to improve an asset that you know had reached its end of life, right, for example. And so we're having to make those trade-offs. Maybe it is critical for us to have an emergency capital repair, right, set aside for those events that do transpire. Right, and I'm just saying, it, it, I can't necessarily have a Canyon Springs worth of money just sitting there yeah. on infinitum until something happens, but we can lessen the blow by having some percentage of expenditures in there. Again, similar to what we did capital fund. 1.5, but you guys think about what the appropriate number is. I think Mr. Shambliss is still watching on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the key thought here, or a couple thoughts here is, we kind of ended up in this funny situation with Canyon Springs, which is a million dollar um, unexpected cost. And so the initial thought was, okay, we've got, uh, We've got fund balance for rainy day. We've got that. And of course, we're thinking about the thing we were talking about a minute before ago, this thing that's over in the operating fund. But that's actually wrong because this isn't in the operating fund. This is in the utility funds. Utility. And over in the utility funds, where, by the way, we call them expenses and it's a different concept, but never mind. Um, over in the utility funds, we don't have a reserve. All right. So you, we we're got the allowed. outcome. To this, we're, yes, we are. Well, we're allowed if we call it out. Peace. The utilities have to be self-sufficient, and that's yes. the limit. If we call out, it, and we have not called out a reserve, so it's not True. there. So we did do the exercise Drew said of what comes off the plate to put this back on the plate. So what we could do is build that in to our future plans, so, actually build that some amount. Now, 
there is some offset to that. So the operating reserves, you know, you could, the operating reserves could be like, you don't have to stack these, if that makes sense. You, you could have a reserve, which is like, I'll just give an example. You could say, hey, we'll have a reserve that is no less than 90 days of operating expenses, but is at least 1.5% of expenses or you, in other words, you could design it like that so that you're not stacking them. Mm -hmm. uh, but you sort of then get comfortable actually, okay, we can use that for operating, you know, if we run into that or we can use it for, you know, it's, so you could, you could use that sort of an approach. And remember this, so for our debt agreements, some of those reserves are required by the debt agreement. But if you structure it the way I'm suggesting, then that reserve could also count as the reserve for the debt agreement. So you're saying Just, specifically if you use the emergency capital repairs and, and piggyback that with the operating reserves, but you can't touch the debt coverage ratio is what you're saying, right? Right, because that's, uh, yeah, that's exactly right. And there's usually a, usually those, op, uh, the debt service reserve you usually can't touch, mm -hmm. but you could design, well, since you can't touch the debt service reserve, that would have to be outside because you you have to have that. But you could take, I think, anyway, so that could be looked at, you know, coming up with a number that kind of, you know, doesn't, you know, doesn't stack it. If it's, if there's a way to not stack it, um, great. In some cases, you will have to stack it. So just can maybe look at that. But, but then you'd have a reserve. So the thing that Mr. Boutet talked about where we had a, an event occur, an event occur, and um, we didn't actually, ha we had to actually slow down other projects to handle it. That's not actually where we want to be, is it? Correct. I was, sorry, I was, was that a catastrophic failure? Or was I was just going to say, <laughs> catastrophic <laughs> failure. Was it? Um, but <laughs> it was an event. I've been told it's an event. It was an event. There we go. Yeah. It was an event. <laughs> so can we ask you to have a think about that we'll the, the other thing i'd say is as you think about how will we fund it rate study no, well <laughs> yes eventually but i would say we w i don't think we're necessarily saying you have to fund it in year one it would just be something that we want to look at and then maybe as part of looking at it, you could think okay and you know over what period will we fund it so you know, analogy to the fact that the city didn't used to have the operating uh, reserves that it currently has, but they established the policy back when they didn't have enough money to actually fund them. And then that became their funding target. So over a number of years, they got the reserves up to that amount. So something like that approach, I, th I think we'd entertain hearing that. We're not trying to say slam one year of, you know, establish the whole thing in one year. So in essence, smooth out the rate increases, mm -hmm. right? So if you were to just try to build this in immediately, those rates would increase and you're trying to smooth it out over time to reach. Yes, only accountants never say smooth. It's like bad. We get in trouble for saying that word. That was inside accounting humor for those of you who don't know that. That's why the rest of us are right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized, okay, know your I'm audience. To, no one got that one. I'm okay. trying to understand what you're so in essence, what you're saying is, so I understand 90 days of operating expense reserve, got to have that. But in essence, are you saying that emergency capital repairs could actually be within that dollar figure for the 90 day reserve? Maybe. If we have an event. Maybe. It's something to think about. That's what I'm saying. Go, think that through and come back with, wait a minute, that's a bad idea because it could actually play like this or actually that sort of makes sense let just come back and tell us what you think yeah yeah is that okay or do you already know the answer no i'm waiting because okay. i'm an engineer i'm looking at the equation to calculate the dollar figure and you smudged it uh <laughs> and i just want to understand the smudge uh, but go you guys figure it out <laughs> It's an engineering term, not an accounting term. Uh, That's engineering math. Engineering math. There's accounting math. 
There's banker math. All right, so we're uh, we don't have we got a little while left for tonight. Um, my mind is just going to okay. We've just given you some more to dos, and I'm very I'm now really focused in on the calendar and not wanting to kind of blow up the calendar. So I'm just thinking about ways to get through the calendar, even though we're giving you some more homework. Um, so, but hang on, we also set a decision point at the end of the next meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, just go with the current policies. They're, we just asked them to do work that they, I think, are unlikely to be able to give to us 24 hours from now. I, I think that's an unfair request. We asked them to think about things, so. So what I'm thinking is, can we find a way to think about maybe leaving a few items open, but move this forward subject to a few items, then, if, you know, some being revisited later or something, I, I don't know exactly how that would work, but maybe we could give some thought about that. Because as I hear us giving you homework assignments, the alarm bells going off, wait a minute, we're blowing up this, this calendar again. So we need to not blow up the calendar. Some of these changes are, are wordsmithing in the right. proposed document, so shouldn't take too long. Um, like I'd indicated, is that we can leave um, current targets, we can leave the current uh, general governmental uh, 16.5, we can change that in the proposed policy, take out the range until the council is ready to um, make that change or not. Um, it's some of the uh, uh, the reserves in the enterprise funds that we just talked about Tell you, what, you don't have to commit to us now. Yeah. Why don't you just, I'm just trying to tee up the notion that let's think about how we satisfy this homework assignment we're trying to give you, but not blow up the calendar. Let's sort of think about some ways to do that. I'm just trying to suggest, I, I think, I think we're open to finding a flexible way through that. If, you know, maybe think about what would make sense from your perspective, and then let us know when we meet tomorrow night so, so, because I, I think we want some of these answers, but are not trying to blow up the process or blow up, blow up the timeline. I mean, um, well, we can we can make some of these these narrative changes. Yeah, make as many as you can. Yeah, yeah. and then um, we can bring a redlined version uh, so that we could you know we we can then work from that document and then keep working through it. And um, so I think that that wouldn't blow up the calendar. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's see, did we get through all of 2.3? So 1.5 net revenues to total debt service, is that, um, is that just what's in our current debt agreement? Is that where we're picking that up from or is that something we're deciding on our own? Well, that, that, is, that is a typical ratio. That's uh, how you get a good bond rating, right? That's how you get a good bond rating. Okay. Some, may, some raters may come back and want to see 2.0, but 1.5, uh, in my opinion, is the floor. So it might be worth adding some words there, just saying ratio of 1.5, you know, something like um, in support of um, strong bond ratings, or just, just add something so that somewhere later, someone who's not familiar with how the bond rating process goes doesn't say, well, where'd they get that number? We give them a clue where we got that number. Absolutely. And that's one I wouldn't mind hiding the uh, catastrophic, catastrophic event reserve under that 1.5 to say it's in there, hmm. as opposed to have those well, this, don't need to be additive. This is not actually a this is not actually a reserve concept. This is a revenues greater than expenses mm -hmm. concept. Is that you see what I'm getting? So it doesn't matter what your reserves are; it won't change that ratio. This is a ratio of revenues to expenses. Yeah. Okay, you're right. Never mind. So 90 days, is the 90 days also uh, coming out of our, is that what our current bond agreement requires? Well, the 90 days uh, for operating? Yeah. Um, that is um, just a, a typical 90 day operating reserve. It's not a requirement um, from a bond. So the debt coverage ratio is is one requirement and then the debt service um, coverage. The debt service reserve. Well, yes. Is yeah. that NP, NPDS2 requirement? The 90 days? Well, 
So I was just coming up here to say that is what we build into our utility rate studies that we conduct yeah. for the most part. The 90 so, days. Yes. Yeah. So Got that's, it. That's, yeah. that's so now that's we're just putting our... it in writing. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, fine. I, I mean, fine with me. I, I don't mean to speak into no, the two I, of you. I, and I thought there was another, there was a requirement for that. But I'm good. Go on. Okay. All right, is that all the 2.3s? I think we've, anyone have any other comment on any of the 2.3s? Good to go. Okay, um, my suggestion is we kind of stop there. We've asked you for some things before tomorrow and some other things will take longer. Um, I do have a number of minor sort of things, which I think the easiest way, I, I don't, I sort of don't want to take up time here, sort of saying, now let's, you know, and going through all these wording changes. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you could give me a Word document, I could just mark it up and track changes and provide that back to whomever so that we can just, then it's easier for you to go say, okay, like that one. No, that not, not no to that one. Just, just, so we just kind of, you know, speed it up kind of thing. Would that, that make sense? Okay. Yeah. How do you feel? Did we... Were you hope? Did we get where you hoped we would tonight, or? I'm glad we got the reserves because it's typically <laughs> it, it's typically it's a section that takes the longest. So so we're no different than um, other other councils who have had to you know wade through setting reserves and setting reserve policies. So uh, we're we're just fine. Okay. okay. So Mayor, uh, okay with you? Then I I think maybe we wrap it for tonight and then. We get uh, tomorrow. We get the short session, right? Yeah, three hours. <laughs> hours. Three hour session. Yes. <laughs> Which would be great to get through expenditures because we're holding up purchasing card and some other internal control things based on that. So. Got it. Okay. So, um, unfortunately, we won't get dinner because Councilmember Holloway won't let us start at five. But you know, okay, I'll bring some more Twizzlers. I'll bring cookies. Oh, you said that last time. I was actually had cheeses tonight, but my son got to it before I got it. <laughs> All right, uh, is there any other business that we need to attend to tonight? Anything else coming before the committee? There is the ARPA briefing, which oh, we could give because yeah. we need, do need it. Even you figure out how we're going to utilize the remaining ARPA amount and there's some ideas. Is that a sort of just couple minute thing or should we lead off tomorrow night with that discussion? Um, it's probably a couple minute thing, don't you think, Drew? Because my okay. concern, I don't, want, I don't want to take up any time yeah. tomorrow night other than yeah. just right. for the policy. Hit us. So. Yeah, I don't believe they're coming with a physical okay. doing it. How do we get there? Plan for a plan. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Yes, finance director. Thank you. Great job tonight. Thank you. All right. Hello, council. Um, Thank you for having me here today. Uh, we're going to discuss using the remaining funds of our ARPA fund, of the ARPA funds collected that we collected from the federal government. Uh, first off, I just want to give a bit of a background. The city received $3.8 million in funds from the America Rescue Plan Act. Uh, the first tranche of those funds were received uh, in June of 2021. We have received the second tranche. Yes, we have. Um, the city engaged in a process to allocate ARPA funds to the community that have been largely negatively impacted by the pandemic. And with the community allocation process completed, and thank you to the members of the ARPA committee, um, past and present, um, the administration is seeking council feedback regarding on how to allocate the remaining funds. Just to go over a little bit about the final treasury rule, the city has elected to apply ARPA funds under the revenue loss eligible use category. Uh, there were multiple other categories that we could have applied um, to use those funds under, um, but given this fact that we applied those ARPA funds under the revenue loss eligible use category, the city actually has, because of that broad latitude, uh, to use the funds for government services, um, subject to a number of restrictions, um, such as the city cannot use funds for debt service to replenish reserves or to satisfy an obligation <laughs> arising from a settlement or judgment. Mm -hmm. Government services includes things uh, such as the maintenance or PAYGO funding building of infrastructure, including roads, the modernization of cybersecurity, including hardware, software, protection of critical infrastructure, health services, environmental radiation, school or educational service, and the provision of fire, police, uh, yeah, fire, police, and other public safety services. So the point of this is 
government services actually includes a lot, uh, more than just this. They'd say, you know, here's a few examples. You can do a lot more with it. So that is what we've done with these ARPA funds. Did you? Yes. Are you use a new term on me. Uh, pay go funded. What does that mean? Um, in essence, um, so pay go is if you get the cash, you can spend it on capital. Other than pay use or pay as you use, which is pretty much borrowing dollars in order to support your capital investments. Okay. So it's very, it's kind of cash versus bonding for it, basically. Mm -hmm. And pay go is how they describe it in the federal government. Uh, we would say pay as you go or pay as you use, typically kind of in the local government, but that is their parlance that you see there. Um, in terms of the current thinking on the distribution of ARPA funds, uh, we've set up this table here for you. Uh, the community allocations there are roughly 200, or not 200, sorry, $950,000. Losing my mind, I guess, right now. Um, with that broken down here, as uh, you can see that between residents, small businesses, as well as community organizations. Um, so the committee and council has voted on that. Uh, staff is currently working on getting those dollars out the door to the community. Um, in addition to that, we have proposed setting aside about $2 million for operating fund support. And you saw that as a part of our 10 year financial forecast that we presented to you today. That was uh, over a three year period, I think it was $750,000 in 2020. We got it here on the big sheet. Yeah, 2022, 2023, uh, $750,000 and $500,000 for 2024, which adds up to $2 million that you see there. Uh, when you subtract the $2 million and the $950,000 from our total ARPA distribution, we have roughly about $850,000 kind of left that it hasn't necessarily been allocated yet. And so I'm just highlighting some of those areas right there for you. Uh, we just showed you <laughs> this table here today, in essence, and you can see that the uh, operating funds support is broken out over a three year period between 2022 and 2024. Um, Two million of the ARPA funds, uh, like we say, were anticipated to be used for general governmental purposes over the next three years, uh, primarily for salaries and benefits, employee retention initiatives, um, and a lot of this is to ensure that we can provide the same level of service that the community expects. Um, and then in addition to that, we have certain costs associated with the administration of ARPA, such as our ARPA coordinator, uh, Sam, who you know pretty well at this point, uh, has been doing a fantastic job for us. Uh, and so that funds also support her and her position. Uh, we've discussed a little bit previously about potential guiding principles about how to use the remaining unallocated funds. Um, we discussed three principles uh, use using the unallocated funds to protect levels of service during a challenging time economically and with staffing shortages. Potentially using the unallocated funds to invest in systems that will reduce the city's operating expenditures over the long term. And using potentially the remaining unallocated funds to enhance the city's ability to generate sustainable revenue over the long term. So in essence, it will help us as a part of our overall financial picture to stretch out that time period when before expenditures exceed revenues. And so um, those are some of the guiding principles that we have want to think about uh, as we kind of proceed and how to maybe use this these remaining funds. Um, some potential use of the unallocated funds. Um, that we've kind of discussed previously as well as kind of currently with uh, over the past couple of months with Council includes restoring potentially one time appropriations removed from the 2021 2022 biennial budget. Uh, there have been things in the past proposed uh, that we never spent dollars on, such as the enterprise content management software uh, program, potentially a broadband feasibility study, facilities maintenance and renovation plan, a comprehensive fee study. Um, in addition, we've had discussions about uh, improvements to our inf information technology infrastructure. Uh, the council chamber's audiovisual upgrade comes to mind. Council just recently passed a cybersecurity kind of services agenda bill to uh, ensure that we can protect ourselves from any sort of intrusions over the next, I believe, four or five year period. Um, in addition to that, uh, we might propose, or could propose conference room technology retrofits that would help us uh, to navigate kind of this new virtual world that we're kind of all living in these days. And then in addition to that, security infrastructure, um, kind of around the building, making sure that we're protected here um, and that there's, you know, reducing that risk overall. In addition, uh, Council may want to consider a second round of community allocations. 
And furthermore, uh, there's potential for community investments, um, such as maybe using some of these dollars, or the remaining unallocated funds for the CIP. Uh, something that comes to mind is the community parks playground project, uh, which you see listed here. But also council may want to consider, say, the take home vehicle program for the police department, which will have an upfront cost of purchasing the additional vehicles in order to support that program. So uh, some of the next steps is uh, with councils to discuss how to allocate the remaining $850,000, uh, kind of establish, or hopefully we've established some principles today, but refine those principles that will guide how to use the unallocated ARPA funds, and then hopefully establish a process using the ARPA council committee uh, to help determine how to use those unallocated funds and then convene the process. And so with that stated, we'll move this back up. Yes. Change the the to an uh. Convene a process. No, using a ARPA Council Committee. Okay. Because the ARPA Council Committee concluded its business. Oh. And it just, let's redo it. And I, do it so we're, yeah. we're all in agreement of this is the committee. If we're going to go down that path. I will make that change. I was just impressed with the first time. So. I, I would, I, this is not a reflection of how good or bad that committee did. It uh -huh. was, its charter yes. was to do that 950k done deal. Right. We're gonna go. We're gonna call another committee. We charter another committee. It may be the same people. It may yeah. be different people. I don't mm. know. Is that the last point slide? taken? Yes. Might so what's where do we go from here? Do we take this presentation to the council do we are you looking for some feedback from this committee kind of where do we go from here i believe it is it on the council agenda this is the committee could change the agenda to <laughs> if, you know. if you want it to you're be talking to the right group yeah. so. if you want it to be on the agenda for the full council we actually if it's not there we can add it now just sort of yeah where what would you like to see as the next step so I guess this is an education, right? Overall, exactly where we are with the ARP funds. That yeah, no, this is have. a yes. fantastic presentation. I found okay. it very helpful. And you've got two paths. One, administration could come back okay. with proposals right. to council, or we could do, as we're suggesting, do a committee of administration and council to go off and figure out, well, okay, some of those highfalutin words up above are kind of hard to deal with. Um, what do we actually do? For what it's worth, my thought is, let's uh, let, let's get on with life. Meaning, let's ask administration bring us a proposal. Um, but I think we owe administration to say, well, do we like those guiding principles, or we don't? Do we want to change them? But I, I would say, let's bring this to council. Let council decide on the question that's presented in this presentation do you like these guiding principles if not tell us how and then i think say to administration if you're willing please bring us a proposal within those guidelines rather than kind of necessary i mean it's up to you well, that's I, what i'm asking what do you want i to think do? well th she's look the administration is looking for help right because <laughs> yeah that's we, why i wasn't we can clear, say yeah. okay then it's gonna be take-home cars so we're gonna we're gonna come forward and say 150 thousand is going towards take-home cars now have you bought into take home cars? We haven't, and we right. won't until the operating budget happens. So I think that just push that just kicks that way out down the road. And based on this, I don't see how that would ever happen. Or There's the just CIP, no money. I mean, or the the, 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 the buying the cars program. up front isn't the issue with that. It's how do we fund the program, which includes replacing them and operating them. Charges. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, it, so uh, this may uh, limit my feasibility for the committee to come if i look at the list you have before most of them in my head fall off because they don't reduce expenses mm. and they at least a lot of them i mean a document management system great idea we ought to have it but there is not a full-time head coming off as a result of the document management system coming into place there's no savings there's operational efficiency, but that won't change the dollars we burn per month. Okay, so and I think for this we ought to look for really what are the savings for the expenditures. But I'm just being cranky. <laughs> it's getting late. Well, it is on the agenda. 
for Monday. Okay. So we could do show the same thing and then have constant discussion on how how to move forward on it. Because you but, know, obviously we're gonna I, update our A V system and things like that. So did I characterize it right though that um, you're not necessarily advocating for the path of administration come back with proposals to the council. You're advocating administration work with a committee to come up with proposals to go to council. We could do that way, or you guys might stand firm on, you know, we want to do something for the community. So let's. Well, let's... what's your preference? Um, I think we need input from council. And so whether it's a committee, you know, we'd like some of your guide guidance okay. on what you'd like to see. We can just give you a whole list of, you know, this this costs eight fifty and this costs eight fifty. Um, but from your your council priorities and other things, what would you like to see? How would you like to spend it? Yeah, do you want the diner menu, which has a hundred items on it, Never or do you want idea. the <laughs> Dix Burgers menu that has five items on it? You know, that's as she's saying. And if she's saying if you want the Dix Burger menu, then please tell us which kind of five items you want. Is it just burgers, or do you want fries too? You know, that I think that's what she's asking. Give us enough to, because otherwise, we don't want to have to bring you a hundred item list. I think. Am I getting that right? We can. <laughs> we have hundred <laughs> items. But... Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, what is, I mean, big picture, what do you want to do? Do you want to do a gift for, uh, to the community in a, as a spray ground or spray park, for instance? I know some, there's a, a, a city not too far from here. You know, they did, they worked with the residents and the residents came and kind of figured out what they wanted to see in a particular park and then they created it. So, I mean, so that, that's one option, for instance, or, or because of Zoom and hybrid, meetings that we just completely upgrade all our systems i mean there's such a i think this would be a great conversation there i i think this you know you'll get sort of the pulse from the whole council and and i think and then we and to the extent we need to give you more then we decide how we're going to work with you to do that right yeah this is this will be a great discussion and and really laying that out for us and kind of helping us understand what the restrictions are and aren't and then getting us to think about those guidelines i, I just think this is a great way to to focus us in on it right yeah okay is that all you were looking for tonight is kind of that reaction <laughs> yeah okay. because uh, you smudged on me again um <laughs> dictionary please are, are are we going are we Going to do a council committee to go through flesh of this or not? Depends what happens on Monday, doesn't it? Right? Like if the council says, no, do this, like hypothetically, you know, do go with it. Go. do this one thing with it, you know, build a, a giant skyscraper with it. Okay. Well, the decision is made then that off we go. But if so, it sort of depends how the conversation goes, I think. Right. Okay. Doesn't it? It's not for the three of us to decide, right? It's no, but I think it, it, it's for administration to say, this is how I'd like to go. And potentially for us as a, as a committee to say, not necessarily dictate, but suggest, recommend, and this is how we can work through this. But I mean, if we want to have that conversation at council, fine. So the, the only reason I think, well, not the only reason, one reason I think that's a really good idea is honestly, I have no sense of the council on this, you know, where like sort of the majority thinking would be. So let's let's take the pulse. Okay. I think it'd be helpful. I think it can be the three. Where is it? It's on the agenda somewhere. Yeah, right it's now it's on it's also. under the agenda under a finance administration committee. Okay. As a committee report, do you want to leave it there or do you want to put it under committee of the whole? No, it's fine there. Definitely. Okay. Um it's gonna be the same discussion regardless. So Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say I think it is helpful to have the whole conversation because obviously like the council members that are here were part of the past and, and more recent like ARPA committee and one of the things we talked about was wanting to start a new group if that's the direction it's going to get back to the other members of the council. So that but, aspect but we may get enough yeah. from the seven, like let's just see how it goes and then Absolutely. yeah. I, I Personally I think the mayor's request is right on and so we need to figure out how to respond to that request. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. 
Okay. Thank Th you. Thanks for the presentation, Mr. Boutte. And we look forward to seeing it again on Monday. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other business for the committee? If not, then if there's no objection, we'll adjourn. Seeing no objection, we're adjourned.